Hi everyone, I'm your host Lokinder Kumar and today we will discuss the function of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus in microbes. Basically we want to understand what is the impact of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus on the microbial growth. In other word, I can say I want to understand what is the function of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus in microbes. Why we need these important chemical compounds when we grow microbial cells. So here I'm designing a microbial cell and you can see I have a cell wall and then I have chemical compounds such as carbohydrate, amino acids, nucleic acids and lipids in the microbes. So you need to basically fulfill that requirement by giving these specific sources which is carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus and microbes they usually I'm taking the example of bacteria, they grow by a specific or well-defined growth cycle where after a particular time period they divide, as you can see here, by the process of binary fission and then this process keep, keeps on going. For this growth cycle, you need nutrients, you need chemical compounds. Here I'm only discussing nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. I have already discussed some of the other compounds. So you should watch those videos and you can get the information in my YouTube channel and you can visit to the specific playlist which is microbial nutrition. So in this video I want to know or I want to discuss the function of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. Let's start with nitrogen. Nitrogen is one of the important constituents of amino acids. So first I'm writing it down amino acids. Nitrogen is required and then you have purines Further, you have pyrimidines, where you need nitrogen. Some of the carbohydrates and lipids, they also require nitrogen. Enzymes, because they are made up of amino acids, so you need nitrogen. And some of the cofactors, they are also dependent on nitrogen. And so as you can see, there are so many chemical compounds that, that are dependent on nitrogen. And most phototrophs and many chemotrophs, they reduce nitrate to ammonia, by the process of nitrate reduction. That's how they fulfill their nitrogen requirement. And another amazing example of uh, nitrogen fixation from atmosphere is rhizobium. So there are different examples. You can study about those examples. Now let's talk about sulfur. Sulfur is also important for amino acids. There are two important amino acids, which is cysteine, and then you have methionine where you, you basically require sulfur. Some of the carbohydrates as well as biotin and thiamine. In, in these, you also need sulfur. And what is the sulf source of sulfur is sulfate. And while the process of sulfate reduction, you basically fulfill the requirement of these uh, sulfur compounds. Now further, phosphorus. This is the third compound that we are discussing. It's important for nucleic acids. It is important for phospholipids. It's main constituents for nucleotide. And then you have ATP molecule with phosphate group is most important. Many cofactors, they are cofactors. They are also dependent on phosphorus. And almost all microbes, they use inorganic phosphate. If you have low phosphate or low phosphorus in your media, bacterial growth will affect, affect, will get affect significantly. And one of the interesting example of E. coli is uh, it, it can use organic as well as inorganic phosphate as its source for phosphorus. So this was all about the function of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus in case of microbes, why we need, what is the role of these chemical compounds in case of microbial growth. In this video, we have discussed the specific role of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. In my future videos, I will try to cover more topics of nutrition, specifically focused on microbial nutrition. So if you like the video, then please stay tuned to the channel and watch all those videos. They, they are going to help you in your studies. Thank you. Take care.